What's good, Shirt Tubers? This is King Ali reporting in for Royalty Concepts TV with a very special sneaker review. As you can see, I got them outside the box already. This isn't the original box, so there was no point of doing the unboxing, really. Um, this is a retro from maybe a few years ago. I think these came out uh, like around 2015, 2016 was the last time they retroed this shoe. And um, what's crazy about this is these actually sat for a while. They sat for a while. And that kind of hurt my feelings, but I'm glad I was able to get it. But I actually was able to get two pair. Uh, one pair I dogged out, I wore the fuck out of it. And then the other pair, which is this pair, I actually sold to a friend of mine. But he hadn't worn them. He had never worn them. And um, I think we did a trade. I forgot what shoe I gave him, but we ended up doing a trade. But um, let's get into the review. As you can see, the OG black and white laces. It was something about back then when they did that black and white, but just with the speckles in general. Like, you guys gotta understand, at one point, Foot Locker sold speckled laces like crazy. And that's what, to me, that's what made it fun, man. You can like, you know what, it's like back then, and not just with the 90s, they kind of did it in like the early 2000s. I think they stopped around somewhere like the beginning of 2000. Around those years, they kind of stopped doing like the speculate. Maybe it was like 2005, I really can't recall. But what I'm saying is, you had the option then to switch up your style a little bit at the actual store. You get what I mean? Like, you can go start with the laces. You know what I mean? You can go, even at one point, you could go to the, like the Nike outlets in Nike Town to get like speckled laces, man. And um, I don't know why they stopped that, man. I guess they figured they weren't making a lot of money with that shit, but I don't know. I mean, it shouldn't cost much to manufacture laces, but... Anyway, this is the shoe that got me into sneakers. This particular shoe, this shoe in particular. This one and then the Penny, the Nike Penny one. I'm not sure which one I saw first, but I mean, it's the same timeline. They both came out of 95, so those two shoes are what really made me fall in love with sneakers. And it's kind of hard to say which one I like more than the other because they're so different in style but when I have worn this shoe I turn heads every time and people always come up and go oh man I remember I was in kindergarten or wherever the fuck they was I was in middle school like it, th these shoes tell stories man and around 95 is when I started hooping like that's when I first like touched the basketball and like really got into playing ball Jason Kidd was one of my favorite players back then of course Penny Hardaway was my favorite at the time and um you know growing up as a kid man you wanted to mimic that player that you liked but this shoe was this shoe was like like undeniably like one of the hottest shoes back then just because it's just just look at it like those big ass bug eyes on the side and what I love most about 90 shoes, man, they told a story. Like, the shoes, these shoes were ha actually had, like, uh, what am I trying to say? They had, like, a character to them. They had, like, characteristics, man. They had that an identity. You know what I mean? Like, you can see this shoe from afar and knew what it was. You get what I'm saying? Like, you can see these paws and that black and white carbon fiber, man. Just the overall shape of the shoe. Look at that shit, man. Just the overall shape of it, man, was just... A great thing to see. White bottom. As you can tell, I wore them a few times. And believe it or not, with that simple ass traction pattern, it worked. It worked, man. Got the Nike check on the TPU plate right here at the bottom. If I can, there we go. Then you have one part on that side. For those of you that have never seen this shoe. If you haven't seen this shoe by now, you, I feel for you. Got a little bit of synthetic leather. Well, it feels real. Um, it's a hard ass leather on the toe cap right there. And I think another thing I love, the reason I love this shoe so much was because it, it was a wide base shoe. Like, <clears throat> the Zoom Flight 95, the 96, the. I think they did a 97 version. Actually, it was called the Nike Zoom Flight 5. That was the 97 version. That was the one that had the one uh, circle down the center. Same shape, 
but it was like an iridescent. I have them back there. I got to look for them. I might do a video. I have to do a video on those as well. But shoes were very, the basketball shoes that had zoom in it were very low to the ground. It had, they had great court feel. Like wide, not too wide to where it looks crazy, but it was wide enough to where your, your toes can damn spread, man. You can feel the court a little bit. You know what I mean? Then it had that low profile zoom unit. Like you got to understand 90 shoes were the best shoes to hoop in. To me, the stuff that they're making now is too many flaws, man. It's too many. Like the PG fours to me, the PG fours. Not to make it about the PG fours right now. I tried that shoe on in a size twelve, and they fit like an eleven. They fit like an eleven. They look cheap to me. A lot of the shoes that are coming out. And I'm gonna just say a lot of the shoes that are coming out now look just look cheap as shit. They just throw big ass Nike checks on them, fly knit, in two hundred bucks. The only shoe that I like currently right now are the Kyrie Sits. The Kyrie Sits, you, you can see the design elements in the shoe. Those shoes look pretty nice. You get what I'm trying to say? But those have flaws as well. But back then, man, these things were beasts, man. I was living in Miami at the time, too. Like, everybody had these on feet. I think my cousin, a cousin of mine, he had the white and navy blue pair. And I think they dropped two other colorways. I think they did a Dallas Mavericks colorway. And that's another thing. Back then, guys, back then, it's not like right now where you see all these PEs and shit like that. Players literally got maybe at the max four colorways in the shoe. So when Jason Kidd played, he wore these shits the whole season. The entire season. If when you think about it, that's great marketing. You get what I'm trying to say? Like, you want to wear what the players win. Now you see LeBron with a thousand PEs. You see Kyrie with a thousand PEs. You see Paul George. You see Kevin Durant. You see all these people with a thousand PEs. And what sucks is we get to see this stuff sometimes. And some of those colorways are better than what they're giving us in store. You know what I mean? So, I mean, it is what it is. But... I'm just in love with these shoes, man. I, I don't know. Well, not I wear these. I think I wore these like maybe maybe once or twice last year. Durable ass shoe, man. But anyway, what's your favorite shoe of all time? For all the 80s babies, man, you guys tell me what are your favorite shoes. I know you guys got to love this sneaker. This sneaker was the shit back then. But um, what's, what's your guys' grails, man? These are definitely one of my grails. I would say between... The penny one and this one is is kind of a tie. It's kind of a tie. Um, oh man, it's kind of hard to say. The Zoom Flight Five is probably number three. The Phone Posit One is four. And I gotta give it to AI. The Answer Four. The answer four was in my, my, my top five. I got to throw the Reeboks. I got to throw Iverson in there because all, all I wore in high school were Iverson. So. The answer four, in particular, the um, the white, red with the gray uh, was my favorite colorway in the, uh, the answer fours. But anyway, I've been rambling. I got a little emotional, man. It's, it's, I, I'm, I'm passionate about sneakers, but I wish. I don't want to say I wish. I hope they continue to do retros and do them right. Um, I just put a video up of the Nike up tempo Air Max up tempo 95s. They came out yesterday, and even though they released that shoe last year and they had tons of colorways, those colorways sucked to me. It was only like two good colorways. I think it was a white, black, and red, and a white, black, and blue. The other ones were like not necessary. But I would like to see these come back in more traditional colorways. And even just moving forward, man, I hope they get more designers, man, that can, like, revamp these shoes and bring this style of shoemaking back. Uh, I think Nike will have a lot more success if they bring this style of shoemaking back. Uh, minimal branding and more focus on the actual design of the shoe. But anyway, I appreciate you guys watching. If you like the video, let me get that thumbs up. Uh, comment, subscribe if you haven't already. Going to keep this content coming. And I'm up out of here. Peace.